Cause you really never know When I'm hurting, never let it show I'm a two-tone, two-phone, two-chain New thing, lame Whipper, you a broke Low class, no cash Certified lame I'm getting to it like I ought to Couldn't pick, so I bought two Understand why your chick came I'm just trying to figure why she brought you I'm really repping and I'm flexed up And I ain't gotta tell them I'm next up Sleep on the they rest up But I'm up and I'm getting my checks up Me and the fellas be high as propellers Ain't like could tell us we great Looking at like how do you figure unless you can talk about a figures I'm too cool for the rules, baby, get off of me Never need no push, I do it all for me Keep a couple real hitters, got them on call for me Money moving, got it in the market where it ought to be Too true for the flex, baby, don't cap to me Drop 50, bring 150 right back to me Keep a couple real hitters, got them on call for me Money moving, got it in the market where it ought to be Look how we litty, we turned up the city, we raising the bar height I been finessing, just look at them stressing, yeah, they been on all night Sipping this water with somebody, daughter, she take what I taught her and build on it Came in this game on that today, ain't in a couple years later, we still on it Be hating on it, 
be waiting on it like a new season. I bet an acre on it. I put some paper on it like I'm loose leafing. Buying them assets. Do me a cash net, I could fall in. Look at my last bit. Ain't got a tiptoe, I'm all in. Think on a level that can't fail, and I roll me a J with the hate mail. Been doing good on the merch sale. All this bread on me look like a bake sale. Tell her your what's really good. I'll be really good on a jaw jack. Send an email about the bread, I'ma hit you back with the call back. I'm too cool for the rules, baby, get off of me. Never need no push, I do it all for me. Keep a couple real hitters, got them on call for me. Money moving, got it in the market where it ought to be. Too true for the flex, baby, don't cap to me. Drop 50, bring 150 right back to me. Keep a couple real hitters, got them on call for me. Money moving, got it in the market where it ought to be. Come on in, come on in. Hit that like button. Let me know where you're checking in from. Real pop up real quick. Just, you know, testing people. Testing, testing, testing people to see where they at on this Friday night. Everybody complaining. Oh, ain't no money, ain't no money. Well, people who complain about ain't no money and they can't figure out how to run their box truck and their cargo van should not be out kicking it on a Friday night. You should be at home studying trying to figure out how the next week is going to be a profitable prosperous week all right so i'm going to do this cargo van and box truck thumbtack training because i've been promising people and i've had actually had people book coaching sessions to learn how to master thumbtack because you know they'll sign up and they won't get no leads and then they'll come to me um in a coaching session for training on how to set their thumbtack up and then they thumbtack goes off the chain from there all right so i'm gonna do a thumbtack training um so that you don't have to waste money coming to me for a coaching session to learn how to set it up all right so that you can be profitable on it all right and i'm gonna give you all the tools and and strategies that you need um for thumbtack so that you can get the leads 
and ultimately make the money. All right. So come on in. Come on in. Make sure you guys hit that like button. Let me know you're checking in from. I may leave the live up. I may not leave it up. You know, this may be one of the ones where, you know, if you here for the gyms, you here. And if you're not, you're not. I figured on Friday night with everybody that's complaining, I would see about 150 people in here. But it'll probably build up, you know. It'll probably build up, you know. We'll see as the night goes on. I'm not going to be here too much long. I'm not going to be here that long tonight, though. I'm just going to do this training and I'm out of here. What's up to Roger Lacey? I see you. Shout out to Roger Lacey. I see Heavy Goodman. I see Detroit in the building. Devontae. Uh, I see Pensacola, Florida is in the building. What else we got? Heavy Goodman, Detroit. Shout out to SD Walt. Cleveland in the building. Lafayette, Louisiana in the building. What up, what up? Mark Brown, Harrisburg, PA, NYC is in the building. What else we got? What else we got? What else do we have? Uh, what is that? Mr. Ra246, Spicy Taste of Life, NYC is in the building. Uh, SD Wall said he's doing his Curia runs right now. I see Steven Shells, Lehigh Valley, PA, New Jersey. Shout out to Paul Smith. MMBMTV in the building. Shot Town in the building. We got VA in the building. Brian Watkins, NYC, Pasadena, California, v, VG. What's that? Oklahoma tapping in. All right, come on in. Come on in. We're going to get straight to it. We're not going to waste no time. Make sure you hit that like button as you come on in. We're going to do this thumbtack training for everybody that got a cargo van, box truck, you know, that need to supplement their income. You know, um, there's no reason people should be complaining, you know, about bread if you have an asset like a cargo van or a box truck, all right? If you're not making enough money, then with, with whatever you're doing, uh, dedicated, if you're running a cargo van, let's say dedicated, if you're running your box truck, OTR, local, and you're just not making enough money, I'm going to give you the thumbtack information where you can supplement and do small jobs or big jobs, however you want to do it on the side. Or you can utilize Thumbtack to start a moving company, a delivery company, whatever it is you want to do. I'm going to show you how to set up your Thumbtack for maximum success. I create my own luck. I haven't seen you in a long, matter of fact, I haven't seen I create my own luck since last year. Can you debate someone on trucking or cargo van? Most definitely. I still got my $10,000 up. I put $10,000 up. Whoever want to debate me. Who you want me to debate? Who do you want me to debate? They got to come with 10 racks, though. They got to have 10 racks. But you let me know who you want me to debate. But I'm glad you are uh, still ticking. I haven't seen you. I created my own good luck in about a year. I think since last so-called peak season. I think that was the last time I seen you on the channel. How you been? But let's get into this uh this training real quick because I don't want to hold you guys. I do not want to hold you. Um, I did cover up some stuff uh, for privacy. I don't want to show you guys any of my customers' information. I don't want to show you guys any of my credit card information. I don't want to show you guys any of my personal information. So I did change some stuff for the um, sake of this live. But you will see what I spend and what I have spent using Thumbtack. And I'm going to show you how to set your stuff up for uh, success. All right. So come on in. Come on in. Let, let's get to it. Let's get to it. Let me move this stuff out the way. All right. So the first thing you need to do is, is you're going to go to services. All right. I blacked out some stuff. I changed the name of my company, all that stuff, because it ain't none of y'all business. All right, so first thing you want to do is go to services, right? And then first thing I want to focus on, uh, we probably should focus on budget, but let, let's go into uh, what a lot of people, I think, need to focus on. If you got a cargo van, you got a 16-foot box truck, all you guys with 16-foot box trucks, that went out and bought a 16 foot box truck and don't know what to do with it outside of me telling you to go get a dedicated uh a dedicated run with either t force waco or capstone doing office supply deliveries in bulk because you guys can get those bulk deliveries you guys can get those palletized bulk paper deliveries all right so outside of doing that 
you can also do small moving jobs on the side, all right? So the first thing you want to do is you're going to go into the moving job, local moving under 50 miles. So whatever your market is, you're going to turn on local moving under 50 miles, all right? And then I should also mention, um, let me put myself up here too for laughs and giggles. Matter of fact, maybe let me... Um, so I can make more room. I just got to remind myself to turn the transparency back off. All right, so boom. Um, make sure to, I put the code, if you guys want to sign up for Thumbtack, if you found this training useful and you want to sign up for Thumbtack, Thumbtack is offering you guys $100 free using my code. So that's pinned to the top of the chat and it'll also be in the description of this live stream. All right, so the first thing you wanna go is go to local moving under 50 miles in your market, right? Now, I have my Thumbtack turned off. I really don't use Thumbtack too much these days. We haven't really used it maybe since, maybe around this time last year. I'll take a look. This is just too competitive, but you guys are new, so you guys don't have options like, like I do, so you guys need all the options, but I'm going to train you so that you can beat out all the competitors, all right? All right, so this is the way it's gonna look, all right? It's gonna show you how much money you spent in a week, how many leads you've gotten that particular week, and how many views, how many people have looked at your company. Instant Book is something that they've implemented with, like in the past year or two. It's very expensive. That's if a person comes to your page and they just wanna book you instantly. They don't wanna look at anyone else. They'll book you instantly. You have to keep up with your calendar. So if you have a calendar on Thumbtack and you're booking jobs outside of Thumbtack, you need to remind yourself that if you book a job outside of Thumbtack, you need to go close that day or that time off in the calendar because Thumbtack is charging you a premium for instant book. I recommend you don't use instant book. I'm grandfathered in because we've been with Thumbtack for about six or seven or eight years maybe um, now. Someone told me that they're making the instant book mandatory. I can't say that for sure because I have an old Thumbtack account. And as you can see, I can I have the option to turn instant book on or off. Now, someone that signed up recently said they didn't give them that option. So I don't know. I don't know because I don't have a new account. I have a very, very old Thumbtack account. And I have the option because I'm grandfathered in. So that's something that you want to look into. All right, the next thing you're gonna look at uh, that you're gonna set up is what customers are going to pay. So you're gonna click on that, right? How much do you charge for local moving under 50 mile jobs? All right, your base price includes two movers and protecting padding and or blankets. Your price, I'm going to tell you your price. You should be charging no less than $100 an hour. I don't care what your skill set is. $100 an hour is what you want to start charging at. Now, you need to look at your market as well. You want to look at your market as well to see what your competitors are charging, all right? Now, we probably should do that as well, uh, but you know what, I'll do that I'll do that later. Let me just get you guys set up here. Um, set it at $100 an hour. Now, as you can see in my market, the average, it's gonna tell you what the average is in your market, and the average is about $90 an hour in my market, right? Which, is 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 not bad. It's competitive, but you can still charge a person a hundred dollars an hour and book uh, a a lot of jobs. All right. So the next thing you want to do once you set your price is they have something called max leads. This is also something new that they've implemented within the last year or two. Um, obviously, the more you set this, the more the leads cost. Right but it also puts you higher in the um, pool. So when people are looking for moves in your market, the more you move this bar up and the more you're willing to pay for leads, the higher you go up on the page, right? So if you do max leads, you're gonna be at the top. Now there are benefits of being at the top, all right? Benefits of being at the top, you get seen more, you get more requests for leads, but remember you're paying for these leads, so ultimately that's gonna cost more money for the leads because you're paying to be at the top, right? But you're gonna also get an influx of leads all the time, all right? And I'm gonna tell you how to turn that on, turn it off, and kind of set your budget for that. Um, 
So the more competitive, you want to be more competitive, you're going to slide that bar all the way to the end. But as you can see, the more competitive you want your competition, the more you want to be seen, right, above your competition, the higher the lead is going to cost. And I'm going to tell you this. Up to $38 for a studio is very expensive for a lead. I'm going to show you what I pay for leads in the past years and how much different it is now. Everything is expensive now. That's why it's imperative that when you when people come to you and you get a lead, that you 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 call them quickly, you send them a quote very quickly, and then you follow it up with a call. All right. The less competitive you are, the cheaper the leads are but you're not gonna be seen. You may not even be on the first page. And if you are on the first page, you're gonna be buried somewhere down at the bottom. And as you scroll this, it's gonna let you know. All right, so if we go to less competitive, right? It's gonna say you won't show up in the customer searches in some of the areas you're targeting. Increase your prices to appear in these areas. Now, the reason why Thumbtack is adding all these different tools um, is because one, they're not public yet. They want to go public and they're still operating at a loss, right? In order for them to go public, they need to show that they're a profitable company to the shareholders, right? And this is why they're implementing this. This wasn't something that Thumbtack had. It was you pay for your leads and that was it. Now they got this. Now they got Instant Book. They're trying to figure out ways to charge you more so that they can make more money. The more options they have for you to pay more money, the more money that they can make and ultimately become profitable so that they can show the share, shareholders, hey, we're a profitable company. All right, let's IPO this thing uh, and make an initial public offer and let's go public and let's get on the NASDAQ and so on and so forth. So up to this point, they're still not profitable. All right. Uh, when we use this, when they implemented it, I always put it at max. You know, I always put it at max because I know I'm a dog. And I know when I get a customer on the phone, I'm going to sell them and I'm going to book the job. All right. So I don't worry about these prices because the prices that we charge for moving are way more than this anyway. And it's just the cost of doing business. Obviously, coming in, you kind of want to set it where it's comfortable for you. All right. Just remember, the more you slide it, the higher the lead is going to be and the more leads you're going to get. So if you do slide this all the way. You're going to start, you're going to get way more leads. It's it's imperative that you're on top of those leads when they start coming in, all right? All right, now let's get down to the nitty gritty, all right? So we took care of all of that pricing, what customers pay, so on and so forth. Now let's deal with the targeting preferences, all right? You'll auto pay for direct leads that match the preferences you set below. And this is where a lot of people have problems that, that come to me for coaching sessions. Hey, Mark, um, um, I signed up for Thumbtack and I'm not getting any leads. And then I, you know, look at their Thumbtack and I see they don't have the right thing set up. All right. So let's go through that now. So the first thing you want to set up is your travel areas. Right. All right. So, boom, you're going to click that. How far are you willing to travel? Come on. Why is it not opening? Let's see. Uh, why is travel areas not opening? All right, there it is. It's moving slow. There it is. All right, so travel areas. Choose where you work. All right, remember, you. this is under the local moving under 50 mile category. All right, so the way I do it is I select by distance, right? So I check Illinois and I check Indiana because Chicago borders northwestern Indiana, right? All right, so boom. All right, from there, I go into the city of Chicago. And I look at the whole city of Chicago. I cover the whole city of Chicago. Central Chicago, North Chicago, near south, northwest, south, east, southwest. Now, there are some areas we don't go in in Chicago, but I still have those areas checked off just in case because I still feel certain customers out. So if someone calls me from the south side and it's a little old lady and I Google map the house, I look up the house, I do my due diligence to see, okay, this is a little old lady. She just needs an old grandfather clock move. It's not a a, 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 a a young cat, you know what I'm saying? Someone that, you know, you know my, my crew may get caught up in a drive-by or something moving them in or out, you know what I'm saying? Then I'll take it. But if someone calls me and they say, 
you know, I'm like, where are you moving from? Where are you moving to? And they say, man, I'm moving, I'm moving from 63rd and King Drive to 63rd and St. Lawrence. I'm going to give them a quote. I'm going to make the quote very egregious so that they say no. Because I don't want to move them anyway. Because 63rd and King Drive, 64th and King Drive, that's old block. I'm not sending nobody at old block, right? I'm not sending nobody on 63rd and St. Lawrence, right? Because that's STL. I'm not sending nobody on, on, on 51. I'm not sending nobody on 29th and Dearborn. I'm not sending nobody uh, 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 um, in Dro City. I'm not sending nobody in Death Row. I'm not sending nobody on. Uh, on M block, I'm not sending nobody uh, in Terror Town. I'm not sending people in certain areas. All right. And it's imperative that you know your city. You don't want to put anybody, any of your workers in tough situations. So certain areas we don't go in, but I still feel customers out. Yes, I profile. I do profile. All right. I'm a business owner. It's my job to keep people safe. Right. Uh, so I, I, I have my map on for the whole city of Chicago, but when people call, I do, if it's a certain area, I will profile a person. If it's a little old lady, a, a little old man is trying to move a few boxes in and out their house to storage or something, will it take that? We're not dealing with no drillers. All right. So I have my whole city, uh, checked. Now we go to the suburbs. All right. So over the past few years, I cut a lot of these far far suburbs out like we used to go all the way up here to the illinois border going to wisconsin right but from from where we are right in here to drive all the way up here to to zion and waukegan and gurney by six flags that's an hour and 45 minute drive now i can charge the customer and i i have charged customers for the drive there and the drive back but that drive is very tedious and I'm a city with 3.6 million people. We don't have to drive all the way up there to get money. There's plenty of money down here in the city. All right? So you need to kind of know your market and know how far you're willing to go, right? So where you see the purple shaded, that's all we cover for Thumbtack. So West Suburbs, we don't cover Naperville. I'm not sending a truck way out to Naperville no more. Don't have to. Oak Park, we'll cover it. That borders the city. Not sending a truck out to Aurora, Bloomingdale, Lombard, we'll cover it. Lyle, no. Bellwood, depends. Bellwood is one of them suburbs that can be like Old Block. Westchester, we'll cover. Hillside, Hensdale. But now these suburbs, no way. A customer's got to be willing to pay an egregious amount of money for me to send a truck out there. And remember, I used to cover these areas. Stop covering them, Right? All these suburbs kind of border the city of Chicago where you see the check, all right? Um, and where you don't see the check, I don't want to cover them. They're too far out. South suburbs, uh, hold on. South suburbs, we pretty much cover all the south suburbs. And so on and so forth, guys. You know your market. You know your area. You cover what you want to cover. I suggest that you go through each area and you use the check boxes of what you want to check. They also have an, uh, another option where you can like drag and draw like a circle of a certain area, or you can put a radius. You could put a 50 mile radius and then they'll put a big circle from your center location out. I don't suggest doing that because then you're going to end up covering maybe some areas you don't want to cover. I just go in and manually select uh what parts of the city you want to cover and which suburbs you want to cover that's why you see like an uh, empty shade there empty shade there because i think this harvey i'm not covering harvey uh these are some west suburbs that i want to cover some northern northwest suburbs north suburbs we don't cover that's why you see some holes here this might be like chicago heights or something like that all right so pick where you want to work all right boom next all right, so next. Now, this is very important. This is where a lot of people mess up at, job types. This is where a lot of people book me for coaching sessions like, man, Mark, I'm not getting no leads. I'm not getting no leads. I'm not getting no leads. So this part is very, very important. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that like button. We got 40 people in here. We got thousands of people that say they're struggling with their box truck and their cargo van, but they out kicking it at the club right now. This is why I did this late at night, because after I do this live, I'm going to decide if I'm going to put it on private or not. So the people that are here, you're going to get the sauce. 
The people that are not here, I'm going to ask them, what were you doing Friday night? Because you're complaining on my Sunday and my Monday live that your box trip business is not doing good, but you're out kicking it on a Friday night. I'm here Friday night cooking up. I'm cooking up. And if I was a struggling box truck business owner, a cargo van owner, the last thing I would be doing right now is kicking it. I would be in my crib somewhere trying to figure out how I'm going to make money. All right. I do things strategically. Everything I do is calculated. I'm not up here at 10 o'clock on Friday night because I'm bored. Trust me, I got stuff to do. I got stuff to do. <laughs> OK, and I'm going to do what I got to do. But I plan to do this purposely this late to see who would be here. All right. Let's get into it. All right. Local moving. Tell us more about your work. All right. So, boom. Let's start with a cargo van. If you're in a cargo van, the only thing you can do is a studio and just a few things. These are the only two boxes you should have checked. Now, if you want to test the waters with a one bedroom, you can depending on the cargo van that you have. If you have an extended length T250 or an extended length T350 or a extended length high roof Sprinter 2500 or extended length Sprinter 3500. So anything that's extended length high roof, you may be able to flirt with a small junior one bedroom. You may be able to flirt with a small junior one bedroom, something very modest, a standard one bedroom a one bedroom from a hoarder, you're not going to be able to move someone in a cargo van. Now, if you have an extended length high roof cargo van, you have a tow hitch on the back, you can go to U-Haul, you can rent a six by 12 enclosed trailer for $29.99, plus another $8 for the insurance. If you have a tow hitch on the back, uh, you get you a tow hitch, you get you a, a two inch ball, you go rent a trailer, that's going to give you another 6 by 12 feet, and that can give you another room, room and a half of furniture if you need additional space. Now, that's for a person who's hustling. If you're a hustler, you're going to do whatever you got to do, utilizing whatever equipment you have to get whatever it is and wherever you need to get to. All right? You're going to let your equipment work for you. All right? So that's if you're in a um a cargo van. All right. Now if you're in a box truck, if you're in a box truck, you're going to select studio, one bedroom, just a few things. If you're in a 16 foot box truck, let's go to 16 foot box truck. You're going to select studio, one bedroom, two bedroom, and just a few things. All right? You know what a studio is, you know what a one bedroom apartment is, you know what a two bedroom is. Just a few things the customer who's going to call you and say, "Hey, you know, I'm cleaning out my basement. I'm cleaning out my garage. I need about 50 boxes taken from my basement to a storage unit I rented down the road. Or I'm a law firm and I need 30 bankers boxes moved from one of our office on the west side of town to another office on the south side of town. Or here, I got a table. Uh, my mom has bought a new table, dining room table. She's giving me her old one. Can you go pick the table up from my mom and bring me the dining room table? Small things. And this is where a cargo van is going to get money at. This is where a cargo van is going to get money at. There are a lot of people who need people to just move a few little things. They don't want to go rent a U-Haul because they don't want to do it themselves. So they'll go on Thumbtack and look for a person with a cargo van just to move a few things. Hey, you know what? I bought a new sofa. I want to give my buddy wants my old sofa. Uh, can you pick this up and take it to my buddy? Or you know what? I went to Ikea. I want to buy um, a computer desk from Ikea, but they're telling me that the contract company they use can't deliver it until next week. I need it today, no later than tomorrow. Can you go to the Ikea and pick this up for me? I'll give you, I'll screenshot you the receipt. They say it's waiting at will call. Just pick it up and bring it to me. This is where you get money, right? That's 150. That's 200, 250, 225 for one job that may take you an hour, hour and a half. This is where you make money at. So a one bed, a 16 footer can do a studio, one bedroom, two bedroom, and just a few things move. Two bedroom for a novice person in a 16 foot may be pushing it. 
You may not want to do a two-bedroom if you don't know how to pack a truck efficiently. All right? You got some modest two-bedrooms, and then you have some people who got a real two-bedroom. All right? They got two bedrooms worth of stuff, fully furnished two bedrooms. They have a living room set. They may or may not have a dining room set because a lot of these new build-outs have an island or a peninsula. So they don't really have the traditional old dining room sets and some of these new modernized, uh, reconstructed, rehab uh, apartments. So there may be a dining room set. There may be not. There may not be um, boxes for a two bedroom, usually average somewhere between 25 to 50 boxes, maybe depending on on the customer. Um they may have some other stuff like some patio furniture for some apartment with a balcony. They may have a few patio, a patio set, two chairs, a little cocktail table, and maybe a grill. All right. So, you know, if you know you're not good at packing a truck yet because you're still learning the business, you may want to stop at the one bedroom. But if you're a good packer, then in, in, in a lot of cases, you can put a two bedroom into a 16 foot box truck. Now, for the 26-foot box truck, guys, you want to go up to three-bedroom, right? You could definitely get a three-bedroom and a 26-foot box truck. And some four-bedrooms, you may be able to get a uh, into a 26-foot box truck. I've actually moved up to a five-bedroom in a 26-foot box truck, but the truck was packed tight. It was packed tight, all right? Not all five bedrooms are you going to be able to put in a 26-foot box truck. Some people will contest that, man, you can't put no five-bedroom. I've moved a five-bedroom in a 26-foot box truck. Not all five bedrooms are going to fit. You got us different five bedrooms. You got modest people. You got people who aren't modest. You got hoarders. You got people who aren't hoarders. You got five-bedroom mansions. You got a, a, a what, what was a really a three-bedroom, but it's been rehabbed and they've turned the basement and they built two bedrooms in the basement right so it all depends if you're new you want to stop at a three bedroom if you don't know how to uh do an in-home estimate and kind of gauge you know what this is a four bedroom but we can fit all this in a 26 foot box truck you want to stay away from it all right so it's possible i've moved a four and a five and a 26 but if you're new, you want to stop at a three bedroom, learn how to pack the truck and learn how to do visual estimates so that you can determine if any particular four bedroom that you may go look at or that you may do a visual inspection via a live chat or a FaceTime call. You can determine what they have and, you know, this this will probably fit. All right. So. I'm going to leave that up to you. Now, scrolling down, how far can you move items? Remember, this is the local move category. All right, within the same building. You definitely want to check within the same building because these are easy moves. You have a lot of people that are moving from the first floor to the second floor. Or you have a high rise where a person wanted to live in this particular building, but they wanted to live on a higher floor. But when, you know, their lease was up from their old place and their lease is up now, they didn't, this building didn't have any high floor apartments available. So they took what they had and they said, you know what, we'll put you on the waiting list. If something comes up on the penthouse floor or right under the penthouse floor, we'll let you know. Right. So what happens to a person will move in and then if something becomes available, they'll take it and then they'll say, hey, you know what, we need you to move us from the eighth floor to the 50th floor. Right. So that's an in building move in building move and that can be a high rise building with an elevator where you'll be utilizing the freight elevator or it could be a walk up where you're moving someone from the first floor up two flights to the third floor or from the second floor to the first floor from the third floor to the first floor from the first floor to the second floor or from the guarding unit which is the basement to the first floor all right so you're going to still charge the same amount that you would charge if you were using your truck for the labor but instead of charging a truck fee you're just going to charge a travel fee all right. So if your truck fee is $100, you may want to charge a $50 travel fee. If your truck fee is $250, you got to send three guys. You might want to charge a $75 travel fee. Right. So that's what within the same building is. But if you're doing local moves, basically, you want to check all of these. You want to check all of these boxes all the way up to 50 miles. Now, here's where people mess up at here's where you are either going to get leads or you aren't going to get leads shout out to everybody's coming in we got 48 in here we got 45 likes hit that like button hit that like button 
If you're going to jump into this business with your cargo van or your box truck, you cannot not check these boxes. And this is why a lot of people don't get leads. If you're going to go do small moving jobs on the side, you're going to have to hit stairs. You cannot leave these boxes unchecked. You can't just check the freight elevator button and the passenger elevator button and leave the stairs unchecked. No one's going to call you. You got to check these boxes. If you're scared of stairs, then don't even bother. Don't even bother. When I started saying that moving money is different, when I first telling you, look, you want a box truck? I'm going to tell you where to make the most money in a box truck, start a moving company. And people that have went out and started moving to either supplement or just went full moving, they always go on Instagram and hashtag me, man, Mark, you write that moving money different because it's different. You want to retire in 10 years, start a moving company and work hard for 10 years. I swear to God, you can retire in 10 years. 99% of you not going to do it no way. This is why I can sit here comfortably because the first trucking business I had was a moving company. We charging $300 an hour right now, baby. It's different. It's different money. What box truckers are running across the country to make in a week and trying to get to four and 5,000 through 3,500, 4,000 in 10 hours. No cap. 300 an hour times 10, plus the truck fee, plus the material cost. That's over $4,000 in 10 hours. So the moving money is different. Now, you know, you can make great money doing smaller moves. If you do three one-bedroom moves in a day, a one-bedroom is going to average you somewhere between three to 500 it should take you two to four hours to do a local one bedroom move local. And that's even if you're moving from one side of town to another two to four hours, you should be able to load up a one bedroom. I don't care if it's on the third floor. You just sent three guys you should be able to load up a one bedroom somewhere in two to three hours, drive across town, let's say 30 minutes. And then that unload time should be half of whatever it took you to load. So if it took you three hours to load, it should take you an hour and a half to unload. Pretty much. That's pretty much what it what it averages out. One bedroom, you're not going to have much disassembly. So you're not going to have that much reassembly. You're going to have to break the bed down, right? You may have to break down a table, right? You may have to unscrew the legs off the couches. That's about it. That's about it. It's not like moving a full house, a four or five bedroom house. You got a lot of disassembly and reassembly and a lot of wrapping. All right, so you want to check all these boxes. Um, same thing for unloading. So that's for loading. Same thing for unloading. You want to check all these boxes. You're going to have to hit stairs as well as the elevator. All right, what extra services do you offer? Somebody messaged me the other day. Hey, Mark, I, I think I might have to go to moving route because I'm just not making no money in my box truck. Uh, do we have to disassemble and reassemble stuff when you do a moving? Absolutely. You walk into a person's house and everything is assembled. Who do you think is going to un unassemble the stuff? That's the mover's job. You're going to have to break the beds down. You're going to have to take legs off tables. You may have to take the feet off some of these sofas. You're going to have to disassemble stuff. You're going to have to break the computer table down. You may have to break down a TV stand. You may have to unmount TVs that are mounted to the wall and then remount them. Yes, you're going to have to do that. I don't understand why you wouldn't want to do that because that's time. When you have a moving company, you're charging a customer for the, by the time, by the hour. So the more stuff they have to unassemble, the longer the job is going to take because you got to disassemble it. And then when you get to the place, you got to reassemble it along with loading and unloading the truck and wrapping furniture and unwrapping furniture, right? So you definitely want to check this box, right? If you don't check this box, because I've had people didn't have this box checked, and this is why they're not getting leads, because on the other end, when the customer is looking for movers to hire, they're checking these boxes. So if they check the box and you don't have the box checked on, on your side, Thumbtack is not going to show you to those people. And most people that are looking for movers are going to check furniture assembly and disassembly. 
They're hiring movers. They're not finna do the stuff. The only people who have stuff broken down and prepared for movers are people who really don't have the money and they on a time crunch and they trying to make the move go as quick as possible. You'll get there. They had a bread, the beds broken down for you. They you had some customers had sh- stuff broken down and already wrapped for you. Those are the people who just trying to get the in and the out. All right. But for the most part, most customers, that the apartment or house is going to still be set up. It's going to be set up, right? So you have to check this box. If you don't have this box checked, nine times out of ten, you ain't going to get shown to nobody. Packing, you can do packing if you want. I stopped doing packing years ago. Um, it's just too tedious. The guys don't like it. Um, I don't offer storage. You probably won't offer it either because you don't have a warehouse. Um equipment moving you do want to check this box equipment moving um can be like studio equipment camera equipment you might have a a music studio that may call you um a dentist office you know we've moved dentist equipment we've moved full dentist office before those dentist chairs are really really heavy so um if you have a 26 footer with a lift gate you definitely want to check equipment moving. If you're in a cargo van, uh, you know what I'm saying? Piano moving, uh, no longer do piano moving. But if you have experience and you want to tackle piano moving, you can check this. It pays a lot of money, but it's very dangerous to the body. Um, and if you don't know what you're doing, you can injure yourself, especially if you're dealing with stairs. You know what I'm saying? You need to know how to take those legs off those pianos. All right. You need to have the right equipment to move them, all right? It's not a game. Piano is not a game, all right? For us to even look, before you even tell us, it's a minimum of $500 to move one piano. That's where the minimum starts at. For an upright, you got a a, a baby grand or a grand, you're talking about $1,000 and up. Why? Because pianos are very, very expensive for one, so you can't cheat yourself, right? Because it's a high risk. Person got a Baldwin baby grand or a Baldwin grand piano. Those pianos are thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Those pianos have to be wrapped to the T. You have to know how to turn them, take the legs off. All of that stuff. So I got a guy that specializes. Even in some, some situations, you have to do something with the keys as well. Same thing with a grandfather clock, all right? So for novice, I wouldn't recommend doing piano moves, all right? I, I just wouldn't. If you don't know what the hell you're doing, stay away from them. Safe and security box moving. If you have a 26-foot box truck, you can't do it because you got a lift gate. If you got a van, you can do it depending on the size. You could probably lay it down in the back. Um, similar to the pianos, depending on what type of safe it is and how much it weighs and where it's located, if it's in the basement or up on a higher floor, you got to have the right equipment. If it's a 600-pound gun safe and it's got to go downstairs or upstairs, if you don't have a crew that's strong enough to handle it and the right equipment, I wouldn't check these boxes, all right? I have it checked because we can handle that, all right? Um, Pool table moving, don't do it no more because, you know, you could have a person that has like a full slate pool table, like a billiard, and that's concrete slate with green felt over it. Those things are heavy. You have to take the legs off of that. So you have to have the right equipment to turn the thing on the side, flip it over, take the legs off. And then when you need to put it back together, you need to have the right equipment because that's not something you can flip upside down. Put like you like I'm not even going to sit here and explain it to you because you guys ain't going to do it no way. A lot of y'all not going to be equipped to, to do pool table moving. All right. You got to have the right equipment for this type of stuff. So I would stay away from it. So coming into the space, you might want to touch the safe, equipment movement, furniture, assembly, and disassembly. This is very key right here. You need to check this box and you need to check stairs, all right? Uh, I'm going to check all of this because I got it turned off anyway. All right, so now availability. Some of you guys maybe looking to do this to supplement income so you got to kind of set your schedule um accordingly but if this is something that you just want to have open and what comes comes then you just leave it open like ours is anytime anytime 
And then when you want to block off days, you just click block off time. And then if you know, you know what, we're taking the holiday off. Let's say the 30th is the holiday. You're just going to block that time. And then you can edit it if you want to block, like we're going to block off from one to four. If you want to block off the whole day, you can block off the whole day. All right. Uh, let me go back. Excuse me. All right. So that's local moving. Now, another thing that you want to um, add is going to be furniture moving and heavy lifting. All right. Uh, this is going to be the same thing as far as your max lead. If you want to be less competitive or more competitive, instant book. I would turn that off if I were you, if you have the option. Obviously, you want to set your prices here. All right. So for furniture moving and heavy lifting, the people that go to this category, some people will go for traditional household moves for apartments and houses. But what this category is really for is heavy lifting jobs. This is where the people look, look for you if they need to have a huge armoire move or if they need to have a safe move or if they need to have a piano move or like some heavy piece of equipment. We had a guy who had a um, a concrete um, statue head. It was like a concrete head of Caesar. And that thing was like three or 400 pounds. And that would be booked here. Now we charge a little bit more in this category because this is where the big jobs come from. The big heavy jobs where you need to have dogs working for you. And you need to have equipment and you need to have how to, you need to have people that know how to use the equipment. All right. So this is what this is for. Um, you do want to check it if you think you're ready for uh, um, furniture moving and heavy lifting. You can check that box. All right. Other other categories you want to do is furniture delivery. This is where people who buy furniture from like Ikea, things of that nature that don't want to wait for the 3 PL to delivery are going to book. Uh, you want to set your prices here, um, right here. All right. So here, this is not what we would charge. Um, they don't give you an option for a flat rate, but usually a furniture delivery, one item starts at about $150, $175, depending on how many items they need to have picked up and delivered is where you would charge a flat rate. You don't really want to charge an hourly rate for a furniture delivery. So if they say they got, you know what, hey, we bought something from uh, Walter E. Smith, but they can't deliver for next week, but they have a warehouse where all the freight comes from and customers pick up. It's about 20 miles out outside of the city. I just need a living room set picked up. So a sofa, a love seat, and the chair, the oversized chair. How much would you go 20 miles out and bring it back to, to me? And then from there, you want to be competitive. I would charge probably 200, 225 for something like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's just three pieces. You're picking it up from a warehouse. You're delivering. You figure the stores charge 125, 150. You do want to charge a little upcharge because you're not the store, right? So you can add 75 dollars on top of that upcharge. You want to be somewhere between 200, 225, and that all depends. If it's more pieces, if they're getting like a living room set, a dining room set and a family room all delivered, then you want to price the delivery accordingly, but you want to do it on the flat rate model. All right. Um, what else? What else? What else? This is all for box truck and cargo van. Make sure you come in, hit that like button, hit that like button, hit that like button. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Uh, furniture delivery, furniture, uh, office moving, same thing. Um, you can do small office moves, all right? You don't want to do something too big, something that you can't handle. If it's a small office, you can uh, select the office moving, and you want to set your parameters just like I showed you for local moving. Um, furniture assembly is also another thing. If you're moving, you're disassembling and reassembling furniture all the time anyway. So you might as well go ahead and get set up for the furniture assembly. You can make a lot of money assembling treadmills, ellipticals, uh, man, we uh, in-ground basketball hoops, um, fitness equipment, tr uh, trampolines in backyards. Like in the springtime, you get a lot of trampolines, uh, basketball hoops, um, 
um uh uh what you call the um the the um the gazebos um just a lot of stuff inside the house beds uh tables murphy beds um fitness equipment like i said you never know so you 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 do want to add this to kind of supplement as well and i'm telling you you'll get a lot more of these jobs than you would probably moving jobs and all this stuff adds up if you do three or four assembly jobs a day you know what i'm saying you make decent money and sometimes you have customers like hey i bought a computer desk can you go pick it up and can you disassemble how much more would you charge me to assemble it so you take your van or your 16 foot box truck and you go pick up the computer desk, you deliver it and you assemble it and you charge them an upcharge for assembling it. Um, you're going to make different, you're going to charge different things for different items. All right. So these are what we charge for a desk or a table, 125. You see the average is 73. I'm not charging $73 for nothing. If it's a desk or a table, you're paying 125, a bed frame, 75. And this is a standard bed frame. This ain't no fancy Walter E. Smith or no sleep number, nothing like that. This is rails, headboard, footboard, uh, 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 snap in. All right, if we got to use tools and stuff like that, then no. This is just the basic uh, snap in bed frame. All right, either the rails or the sideboards with the footboard where you just put them in the slots. All right. And we'll even throw in if it's got slats, we'll, you know, do that. But if we got to drill the slats in and stuff like that, more money. You're looking at $100 plus. A typical chair, 50 bucks, right? This is just a chair. You know what I'm saying? Entertainment center starts at $135. You see the average here is 80 bucks. Some of those entertainment centers can be kind of tricky. So you want to make sure you get the skew and look it up before you get a customer to quote. Bookcase. We got 65. Some bookcases can be tricky. Make sure you get the skew and look it up. Dresser 85. Outdoor furniture. We start at 150. Some of this outdoor furniture can take all day. Get the skew. Look it up. Baby crib. $100 all day long. All right. For you guys that would select Express, uh, which is not AIT, it's plenty of people who still go to Bye Bye Baby, Babies R Us, so on and so forth, and buy baby cribs, and they don't select to have the contractor uh, through the store do the assembly. They'll come to Thumbtack. Baby crib is simple. Once you've done one, you've done them all. That's a hundred. That's an easy $100. That's a 20-minute $100. All right? Shelf, 75 You set your own prices based on your market. All right? Um, what else? What else? So that's furniture assembly. I just want to make sure I got everything. Furniture assembly uh if you're moving you can also do tv mounting um since you you'll be doing it anyway taking tvs off putting tvs up um now let's let's i want to give you an idea of what you're going to be paying for these leads so let me make sure my credit card is not showing give me one second it is showing so let me scroll out the way of my credit card real quick and now let's go back all right, so, all right, so I haven't used Thumbtack in about a year now, as you can see, but I want to show you how much money, because when I was using Thumbtack, I would set my budget to unlimited, all right? So you do have an option. Maybe I should show you guys that first, or your budget. Let's show you guys that for, so edit weekly budget. All right, boom. See, I got my budget set to unlimited, but you know, everybody may not be able to set their budget to unlimited and walk away and not worry about how many leads they get and how much money they're being charged. And I'm going to show you what I was paying on a day-to-day -day basis. So you can set your budget for the week. If you want your budget to be, let's say 150 for the week, you can set your budget to 150. You know what I'm saying? Uh, whatever you want your budget to be, let's see, we set it for 150. Say, so your new weekly budget is 150. If you already spent more than this, you won't be charged anymore. All right, so 150, it usually shows you how much leads you're going to get. Uh, but I guess they don't do it no more. So let's see, edit weekly budget. So it used to be something here where it said, uh, for 150, you'll get about five to six leads. All right, 
But, you know, I'm going to set mine to unlimited because it's always been unlimited. So, and I'm going to show you that it's been unlimited because I'm going to show you how much money we've spent. So, you're going to go there and you're going to set your budget. Set it to whatever you can afford, all right? Um, we did. I showed you how to do max leads. Let me go back to that screen. I don't want you to see my credit card information. So let's go to payments. Let me move my credit card. Scroll down a little bit. Let's go back there. All right. So boom. Um. So I got four hundred dollars in my thumbtack. That's been sitting there obviously for over a year. I guess I'm, that's four hundred dollars I'm gonna lose. Um. But let's take a look. Let's take a look during peak time where I was running Thumbtack ads. Uh, so let's say this is last year. Um, so on this day, I got six leads on June 11th. It cost me $61. Let's take a look at some of those leads. All right. So some of those leads, one lead was $22. And that was for a furniture assembly job. This was for $8, $6, $6, $6, and it totaled to $61.43. Furniture assembly. So these weren't even no moving leads that day. But let's take a look at, all right, so this day, May 29th, I got hit up twice. Remember, I had mine set to unlimited. So I got charged $59.78 earlier in the day, and then later in the day, I got charged $57.09. So this day, I had 10 leads come in. 10 leads come in. I paid damn near $120 that day on leads. All right. A few days prior, I paid 60. The day before that, I paid 52. A few days before that, 54. Actually, I paid twice this day. So I got a lot of leads this day. Um, so this day, we paid $108 for leads. Uh, May 15th, paid 53 just for three leads. May 9th, four leads cost me $52. Matter of fact, I had 10 leads that day. They charged me twice, $108, all right? Um, and at this point, I'm getting leads every day. I'm spending about, averaging about somewhere between $50 to $100 a day for leads. The fourth, the third, the first, April 30th, I'm going backward. April 29th, 28th, 26th, 25th, 20th, 19th, 18th. April 16, 14, 14, got hit up twice that day. The 13th. So I'm averaging about somewhere between $50 to $100 a day at least consistently, guys. April 8th, April 8th. So this is what you're going to pay. Now, the key to this is I showed you mine has always been set to unlimited. So being unlimited means the lead's gonna keep coming. You don't have a budget set, so you get a budget set to 150, you're gonna cut it off when you hit that budget and you ain't gonna get no more leads for the week. I got mine set to unlimited, so those leads are gonna keep coming. So you can't be lazy and stagnant. If you're gonna set it to unlimited, when those leads come in, you need to have an automated reply so that when it comes in, you can hit the button to send them that automated reply. Thumbtack is giving you the number, and as soon as you send that automated reply, you need to call that customer right away. Because nine times out of 10, they hit up at least three or four other people. Thumbtack is making their money. So if they charge me $15 for the lead and a person hit up four people, they charge them other three people $15 too. So Thumbtack made $60 just for being a middleman and connecting the dots. It's up to you to beat the other people to the punch and be a good salesman. Right. Because fifty dollars, fifteen dollars for a lead ain't nothing if you charging a person two hundred, two fifty, three hundred dollars an hour. Or even if you start out one hundred dollars an hour, if you charge a person one hundred dollars an hour. and You spend fifteen dollars on a lead and you charge a person one hundred dollars an hour with a two hour minimum plus a hundred dollar truck fee. That's three hundred dollars. It costs you fifteen dollars for the lead. So you already at two eighty five. If the job is done within two hours, that fifteen dollars just made you two eighty five. Right. But the key is you have to be on top of it. You can't let these leads come through and then at the end of the day, go back and start calling these people because what they're going to tell you is, oh, we already got somebody. Oh, we booked somebody already. 
Yeah, we booked someone earlier today. All right. So if you're out doing work, you may want to have somebody else that's receiving these leads that has more time that can hit them back. Because if you're out doing a job, you may not be able to be that quick. And that's just the fact of the matter. The reason why I could spend 50 to $100 a day is because if I get 10 leads, let's say on this day, April 8th, I got 10 leads. So around every, you can see the pattern. Right around 50 or so dollars is when Thumbtack hits that car. They don't let it get too high. I don't even think this system, they allow this for new people. I think the new people have to preload their Thumbtack account. The old way of doing it, which I'm grandfathered in, you just put a credit card on file and then right around the $50 mark or so, they'll hit, they'll hit that card. So like for April 8th, once it got to 54, they hit it. When they hit 50, they hit it again. I had 10 leads this day, right? So 10 leads is $100. If I book one job, let's say a two-bedroom apartment that pays seven, dollars $800, that one job covered the cost of this lead, whatever the labor cost was, material cost, we charging them for that, the truck they're paying for that, still made money, still made hundreds of dollars. If out of these 10 leads, we book two leads, still made money. One lead. If we book one job out of these 10 leads this day, still made money. The only way I didn't make money spending $100 out of all these leads is if I booked a one bedroom or a studio and it was done within a two hour minimum. But if I booked anything over that, it was profit. If I booked two jobs, it was profit. Three out of 10, more profit. Four out of 10, so on and so forth. And also, the more jobs you book, people are scheduling for later on down the line, right? This is how you fill your, this is how you fill your schedule up. This is how you can look two, three weeks out and be like, man, I'm booked for that whole week. I got three jobs each day. All right, so this is how you do it, all right? So if you have the budget, set it to unlimited, like you see here, you know, every day, every day. You know, and it's going to go all the way back for years. This goes back for years. This goes back for years. I'm not going to sit here and scroll back. We back in 2021. It goes back for years. We can keep going. You know, so all this money has been spent with Thumbtack. You're talking about years. But all this money has turned over to millions of dollars. So, I can keep going, you know. We can keep going. Like, I can keep going back for years. So, um, what else do I need to, oh. I want to show no credit card information. I was only last four digits. All right. What else do I want to show y'all for Thumbtack? Thumbtack. Uh, one other thing. All right. So your messages are going to come up here. Um, obviously, I've had my Thumbtack turned off, as you guys can see, since last year. But you get repeat customers. I didn't respond to this. This is why you see that dot there. This guy wants us to move his five-bedroom house again. All right. Uh, people's information. It'll let you know if you lose the bid or if they hired someone else, all right? It'll give you the option to say you booked it and then you can complete it and close it out. Can I hire you again for a move February 28th, moving a one bedroom apartment to a storage unit? You get repeat customers. Now, here's something else I need to tell you. And this is something good that I do want to tell you. Uh, Let me get this off. I'm going to pull myself up. Oops, 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 let me get this off. Let me pull myself back up. All right, so boom. A good thing about Thumbtack is once you pay for that lead the first time, that's the only time you're gonna pay for that lead for the customer because the messages, which is what I was just showing you, it's gonna always remain here. So when a person wants to hire you again, let's say like this person and this person and... Look at this one. My movers just canceled on me. I'm moving tomorrow. I'm moving from a second floor apartment to a third floor apartment. Movers cancel all the time. Where is that one? 
right here where it says Jessica Watkins. She wants to hire us again. So the beautiful thing about this is if they hire you for the first time, you pay that lead. When they want to come back and hire you again a year or two later, they're just going to come back to the original message. That thread is going to always be there. So you're not going to have to pay for that lead again. This is how you build relationships. And then you're going to, it, it, it stores all this information for you in these threads in the cloud. So you may book a customer one time, pay $20 for the lead, but you may be moving this customer every summer for the next five years. So that $20 lead is going to turn into thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, plus a relationship with that customer, plus the referrals that customer is going to give to her friends and family. If a person comes back, they're definitely going to refer you. All right. And that's pretty much it, man. That's pretty much it for, for, for Thumbtack. Um, I'll take some questions and then I'm going to go ahead and get up out of here. I'm going to go ahead and get up out of here. If you came in late, I got the uh, code pinned to the top of the chat uh, to get you started. $100 to help get you started to load up your Thumbtack account for leads. So make sure you click that link in the chat that's pinned to the top of the chat or the link will be in the description below as well. You can't hear me. Y'all can't hear me? You gotta turn your, uh, my mic is on. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hold on. Can you hear me now? Oh, okay, bet. Yeah, my sound is on. Kevin Burst, that's something with you. What market you in, Ice Wallow? What what market you in? You know what? Listen, some markets are gonna be different than others. You know what I'm saying? I'm in a big market, so you know it all depends on your market. You know, I just wanted to do the training because I've had people book coaching sessions. Like Mark, I want to do thumb tap, but I ain't getting no leads, and then they book a training for two fifty, a coaching session, and I'm like, you know, this is something like I, I be feeling bad because. So that's why I'm just doing it now. So now everybody can get this training so you don't have to come to me and book a coaching session. It's just all about how you got your 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 thumbtack profile set up. Make sure you have pictures too. Um, make sure you put some nice pictures in there. Make sure you have a nice description. Um, so yeah. Uh, Glenn, my trucks are all local, so not much, you know. Sometimes you might have a truck that may only need to get gas maybe one time a week. So. You said they lightweight seem like some fake leads, all Indian people. Well, you know what? I don't... You know what? That's a that's one of the main reasons I stopped using it last year. Obviously, I've been using it for years since like the mid twenty tens, and you know, there's a lot more people on there now, right? Because a lot of people work for themselves. A lot of people have box trucks, so competition is a lot more fierce now. Um, I did see some things that felt like. Fugazi leads, you know, because I just kept getting leads and I wasn't my turnover as far as me booking jobs just wasn't where it used to be. And I started to question it, too. And I'm like, man, Thumbtack tripping with all these new charges and all these overabundance of people. And I, I was thinking, like, man, are these competitors trying to drown me out? But then once I once I, you know, I always keep my stuff unlimited. So. What you're saying, basically what I'm trying to say is basically what you're, what you're saying, that crossed my mind last year and the year before last because that's when I started to see, like, weird stuff happening. But when I think about it, I'm like, why would someone purposely request a lead unless they're just trying to drain the competitor's budget, Right? That's the only way I can think a person would do that. Um, but I don't know, you know. 
No, no, no insurance requires from stunt tax. It's just a lead. It's just, it's just a lead generating service. That's it. Whatever the requirements, you know, that you need to have for your truck as far as your insurance or whatever, that's that's on you. Thumbtack doesn't hold anyone liable for anything. They just connect consumer to a service provider. That's it. Uh, you said you had a few repeated customers and only been moving for four months. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's what's up. Uh, uh, let me see. Any questions? Said Mark, you got a hefty subscription plan. It's just set to unlimited. That's all. Here's the thing. Like, I want all the leads. I want them all. I want them all. But I also know how to turn leads over. So. Me said mine to unlimited, it never really bothered me because I could turn the I could turn the jobs over. I'm quicker, I'm faster, my sales pitch is meaner, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's all about how quick you are to that customer and if you got that pitch. You got that pitch, they're gonna book it. Is this gonna be on members only? Uh no, I think I'm gonna leave this one up. It's crazy because last Saturday I did a live stream on Saturday night and on a Saturday night I had like 130 people. So I thought people wanted to know this. So I figured I'd come on tonight. I was curious to see if a lot of people would be in here and maybe not so many people, but I think it's because a lot of people don't really care for the moving aspect of it. But if people watch this and stick around, this is not just necessarily moving. You can do small odds and end jobs. You don't necessarily have to use thumbtack for full moves. There are plenty of people who just need one item picked up. There's people who just need one box picked up. People will pay you a premium to pick up one box. There's people out here that just need art picked up. You know how much a person will pay you to pick up a piece of art? Just a picture and a frame. You know, I've charged people $150, $200 to pick up a piece of art. And they pay it because some of these pictures are portraits and custom paintings and they want them moved carefully. And they're willing to pay a premium to have them moved professionally. So you never know who's going to call you. So. Uh, let me see. Uh, uh, let me see. Have you used other lead gener generated services besides Thumbtack? We tried Home Advisor, but Home Advisor doesn't exist anymore. Angie Leads bought them out. Um, so it's Angie Leads now instead of Angie's List. They bought out Home Advisor. But I tried Home Advisor when I was in the um, junk removal business for a year. It was good for the junk removal business, but it wasn't. You know, it really wasn't even good for the junk removal business. Now, there was a lot of... See, the thing with Thumb Thumbtack versus Home Advisor when they were around, there was a lot of not Fugazi leads on, on Home Advisor. There was a lot of people that were just searching for jobs in the wrong categories and then we would get charged for them. You know what I'm saying? So it would be people looking to have their leaves raked and then they would come in the moving category in the junk removal category let's say and request a quote and you call them and they're like yeah i just need my leaves right do you guys do that listen this is junk removal why would you and then i would have to contact the rep at home advisor like man this person will need their leaves right we don't have a leave raking sir this is junk removal man we need a refund for this lead they would give it but their leads were very expensive too their leads was like 25 to 50 dollars a lead um, so I used Home Advisor before, but other than that, no, nah, just thumbtack. Just thumbtack for lead generating. But Home Advisor don't exist anymore. It's Angie Leads now. I've never used Angie's List or Angie's Leads, so I wouldn't be able to tell you about uh Angie's List. Uh uh You said people in the bars getting hammered? Well, that's why their business not doing good. 
Hey, bro, on a side note, I love all your content. I used to have a semi truck company, but the carb compliance F my game up went from five trucks to none, man. I'm sorry to hear that, man. I appreciate you for tuning in, though. Yeah, California bad for trucking. Yeah, y'all got Newsome out there with that AB5 law. Uh, the real business people is live right now trying to get better and make more money. Thank you for this training. No problem. I charge a direct shipper for two fifty for three pieces of artwork and two other small ventures. Dinette, I see. That's what I'm saying. That artwork, like, you'll be surprised how many people want just a portrait. Just a portrait moved. You'll be surprised and, you know, you charge them. They'll pay it because they want it moved. They want it in a cargo van or maybe a box truck, a 16-footer, whatever you have available. You wrap it, you lay it flat, you pick it up, you deliver it, and they pay you. You say you're going to download Thumbtack right now and see how it works? Yeah, make sure you use my um, link in the pin to the top of the chat or in the description so you can get that $100. So you can get that hundo, 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 hundo. All right, man, if it ain't no more questions, that's all I wanted to do is come on here and get y'all that uh, thumbtack training because I have been promising it to y'all. Um, make sure you implement it, man. There's no reason people should be out here struggling. There's opportunity out here. Make sure you download the other apps, Go Share, Freight, Curry, and Rody as well. Holiday season is coming up. If you got a cargo van, you got a 16-foot box truck, you should be getting money. You should be getting money. There's opportunity out here. Even if you got to download Amazon uh, Flex and even the Spark app. I'm going to tell you a story. Kirk didn't tell y'all this, but when Black Friday comes up and Cyber Monday, like y'all want to have all these apps. Y'all want to take advantage of the final mile retailer to consumer or fulfillment center to consumer because that's where you're going to see peak season bump set you're not going to see it in the middle mile because you would have seen it already because this is peak season for the middle mile right kirk had a, bought a tv the other day from walmart and you know walmart has a delivery service which is spark right which they have people in their car come pull into one of those lanes and they bring the stuff out and then they deliver it to the customer so they order like a 75 inch tv and every person that walmart kept you know, and the Spark app kept sending this job to would come and they would be in the car. It took four days uh, for them to realize, look, you know, cars keep coming. We really don't have anyone on this platform that has anything bigger than a car or let's say a family van. Nothing with a cargo van that could haul a 75 inch TV and keep it in a box. So she ended up having to go rent a truck, right? And, um, because of the inconvenience, Walmart refunded her for the TV, so she damn it got the TV for free. I say that to say this. Last year, when I was looking on the Rody app on Black Friday, damn near all the deliveries for it said 65 plus. So 65 and up. It lets you know, damn near all the deliveries for a 65-inch TV because obviously those 65 TVs and up go on sale for Black Friday. And they were paying a lot of money. And there was a lot of those TVs because most of the carriers that work for these apps, these gig workers are in cars and they're in economy cars. They're in economy cars, Tercels and Prisms and whatever those cars are, the, uh, the, the Toyota uh, Prius, I mean, they're not in cargo vans. So this is where you want to make your money. So you want to download Spark 2. If you see 65, 75-inch TVs, this is where you get your money at because you have no competition. You have no competition. So I'm giving you another jewel. Black Friday, you want to make sure you have that Spark app downloaded because all those big screen TVs, none of those regular Spark guys that are out working right now, they're in Hyundai Elantras, Hyundai Sonatas. Honda Civics, Toyota Priuses, ain't none of them finna be able to move those 75 inch TVs they gonna put on sale for $300 Black Friday. This is where you go get money. So download all the apps. Don't just stop at Thumbtack. I just wanted to do the training tonight so that you guys have it down because a lot of people just didn't know what to check. 
All right. But now since we got that out the way, um, I think that's it. Who's on the next testimony? It may be you. It may be you because this other guy was supposed to come Wednesday. He ain't hit me back yet. So I may be reaching out to you by Sunday. It may be you. SUVs can handle a TV that big. I got a 70 inch and I have a Toyota Highlander. But you might have taken out the box. See, here's the thing. When you go pick a TV up yourself, right, you can take it out the box. If you got to take it out the box to get it in, you can do that. But a person who buys a new TV, they want it delivered in the box. I don't know if you was able to get a 70 inch and a, 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 a Highlander without taking it out the box, but for the most part, I'm just speaking facts. If you pay attention to when you go to Walmart and you look over to the side, a lot of those guys that are doing Walmart Spark and, you know, Amazon Flex and all these different gig apps, they're in cars. They're in economy cars. They're not in gas guzzlers. They're not in something that's costing them a lot of money. They're in economy cars. They're in Hyundai's, Honda's, Toyota's, right? They're in small cars that are fuel efficient. Because of the type of job they're doing. You know, so, you know, they couldn't get their TV delivered for four days to the point where they had to go rent a truck from Home Depot or for U Haul, a van rather, and go pick up the truck they sell. And then Walmart just, you know, refunded them because they couldn't provide the service. So, you know, that's just an opportunity. It's me dropping gems on you. Uh, any thoughts on car hauling? I looked into the car hauling some years ago. Um, I think it's a lucrative business. A lot of risk involved, a lot of liability involved. I I I looked at it and then I decided that it it wasn't for me. Um, because similar to the box truck and the semi truck, you got to have relationships. You got to have a lane. The reason why I looked into it years ago is because. Um, I had met a guy who was ha hauling cars, but he had a connection with the Ford plant here in Chicago. So the Ford plant here makes the um, the uh, the Ford Explorer, and they were making the Taurus, but they don't make the Taurus. Obviously, Ford doesn't make any cars anymore except the Mustang. But this plant here makes the Explorer, and it used to make the Taurus, and it used to make the Mercury Sable back in the day, but now it just makes the Explorer. So he had a lane running from there to dealerships throughout uh, Chicago land area, and they would pay him three hundred dollars a car. And he had a three car hauler, so he would make maybe two or three runs a day. So he was making nine hundred dollars each run. You know, what I'm saying if he do two or three a day, he's making somewhere between nine hundred to twenty seven hundred dollars a day. So. That sounded good to me. But once I looked into it, I didn't have a relationship he had and I wasn't going to jump out the window just based off, you know, one person having a connect and able to run straight from the manufacturer to local dealers. You know what I'm saying? Because I would have bought the equipment and then wouldn't have been able to find a connect. You know what I'm saying? So I ultimately didn't do it. But... um. I know somebody who does it privatized, but he has a connection with a lot of, see, here's another thing. He He's from Chicago too. A lot of rappers and ball players. We have a dealership. This is where I buy all my BMWs from, Joe Perillo. He pretty much sells Rolls Royces and Bentleys and Lamborghinis to a lot of the rappers in Atlanta. They buy their cars from up here in Joe Perillo. And this guy he has an enclosed trailer, like a 48-foot enclosed trailer and like a 2020 Ford F450 or F550. And he has a direct connect with Perillo, but he knows the rappers. So when they buy the car, they'll order the car. Yo, give me that, that, that Phantom. I want this stock number off your website, that Phantom. I'm going to wire you the money. They'll call him. He's up here. He'll go to Perillo. He'll load the car up, and he'll run it down to Atlanta to um qcp or bankroll freddie he he delivered bankroll freddie uh purple Urus, and you know he'll take cars to miami to the rappers that live out there and he's checking the bag 
he all little baby cars come from up here for the most part. So he running cars back and forth from up here down to Atlanta for little baby. And when little baby want to trade a car in, he'll go down there, pick it up, bring it back up here, trade it in a Lambo for a Rolls Royce and then take the Rolls Royce down there. But that's a connect. Everybody that I know that has been in that, that lane or is in that lane, they have a connect. You know what I'm saying? So, um, when I realized that, I just, I didn't do it. Uh, can you name those apps again? So Thumbtack, which you can click the link above and get $100 uh, to get you started. Freight, F-R-A-Y-T. Uh, Curry, C-U-R-R-I. Rody, R-O-A-D-I-E. And go share G O S H A R E. Uh, it's middle mile, but I'm getting paid from a regular customer to move a valuable paying 700 miles for $1,200. Doesn't take up any space, so I can still book basically my whole truck still going the same way. That's what's up. Uh, for a route with a cargo van in Oklahoma, how would you go about pricing the route per stop or per mile? That depends. Is it something that you're getting from a, a logistics company? And what are you hauling? If you're hauling just packages, you're going to get paid per piece. If it's packages, like small parcel packages, you're going to get paid per piece. So I need to know, like, what it is you hauling. Are you hauling it through a company? Is this something that you're getting direct to a shipper? What? I'm going to look at the video from the beginning so I can see if I do it right. I appreciate this, Mark. No problem. Hey, big bro, last question. Thoughts on lead generation by commission only. I seen one site. Say so only pay for the land at least. They charge 30%. Uh, 30% on a lead, that's high. Because if I book a move and the move pays $1,000, I'm giving them $300. But if I book a move on Thumbtack for, let's say, a three-bedroom, that may be a $30, $40 lead. I'm making $1,000. So I'd rather pay for the lead up front for a smaller amount, then give 30%. 30% is egregious. That's a lot of money. You know, a $100 job, let's say a $100 delivery, that's $30. So now I'm left with 70. A $1,000 job, that's $300. A $100 delivery, Thumbtap may only charge me $9, $8. I remember when Thumbtack leads for like small deliveries used to be $5, $6. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, if you got like a, let's say a $700 job, that's a $210 kickback. I'm straight. I'd rather pay for the lead up front than pay a percentage. Getting from a warehouse Monday through Friday, average 120 miles daily, eight stops. What are you hauling? What are they, if you're getting it from a warehouse, is it a logistics company or is this a, an account that they offering you or is this an account you, you pitch to them? Any recommendations on software to calculate service costs? You're talking about service costs for what you want to charge for your business? If that's what you're asking, I, I, I haven't run across software that does this. I just look at the market, see what the competition is, and I just charge this whatever, something in the middle, that sweet spot. Not, it may not necessarily always be in the middle. Just something that's right, uh, that sweet spot. 
Yeah, if you so if it's if it's something that you're looking for your own service based business, no, I've never come across a software to calculate service costs. If I'm moving, my rates are my rates. So if I see that the average company, which the average company is charging a hundred dollars per man, then I'm gonna charge a hundred dollars per man, or I may charge ninety dollars per man. You know what I'm saying? I go based off what the comp what the the comps are in the market. You know, so when I look at the comps. I just kind of set my prices based around the comps, you know. But then if this being offered coming from a logistic company, they pretty much set the standard of how they're going to pay you. They pretty much setting the standard. But if they're giving you the option, depending on what it is, if it's office supply stuff, but you said eight stops, so that's not going to be a lot of pieces. If they say, how do you want to get paid? Then charge them per stop. Do you use a program or an app to manage your calendar for booking? Uh, to be honest with you, a calendar. Just use a booking calendar. You can get a booking calendar for your business. Uh, if you're a new business and you don't have that much infrastructure, there's plenty of business booking calendars um, that you can download off of uh, the app store and pay a service fee. And if you really want to be honest, I'm going to tell you how I started back in 2010, 2011. I used my iOS calendar. Back when I first got started, I used my iOS calendar. I mean, you got a calendar. Everybody pretty much has an iPhone. And even if you don't have an iPhone, you got an Android. I believe they got a calendar. You just use it. You use what you have. And this is something I said before, too. Like, why do people want to spend money? You got a phone, tablet. Listen, if you got an iPhone and you got a small business, you can use your iOS calendar. And it's going to sync with your everything, your Apple Watch, your iPad, your, 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 if you have a Mac computer, it's going to all sync. Why go spend money on something when you have access to a calendar? You got Google, use Google calendars. Outlook, Outlook calendar. If you're a small business, I wouldn't go spend money on a professional calendar if you don't have a magnitude of infrastructure, and operation, and business coming in that you need a calendar and you can charge the person and you can do this and just a bunch of different things you can do. If you're not set up like that and you're dealing with just a handful of uh, 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 customers, use what you have and save money. On try hit me up uh, because of my old MC and DOT number. I don't know how to calculate it, so I didn't do it. Well, see, when on track hits you up, they want you to place a bid based on zip code. They want you to place a bid based on zip code. So with the on track, you got to know what you're doing. I've, 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 a few people have booked me to uh, take a look, and it can be confusing with them. You know, you gotta, you gotta know how to calculate those pieces, those zip codes, the mileage. How much you gonna pay people? All that. So that on track laser ship, it's kind of tough. But I wouldn't use no uh, service program calculator to do that. You are gonna have to sit down with a pen and a pad and write that stuff down and come up with an estimated cost when you make that bid, so that you don't underbid and get the contract and be out here operating at a loss. All right, any more questions? All right, I think this has been very informative. What time is this? It's 11.57, it's midnight. I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Hopefully y'all got some value from it. I'll leave it up. I'm out, peace.